People of YouTube, welcome to my channel. I'm Aaron, a software startup CEO who didn't want to make this video. I'll start the video off by saying I'm a Tesla fanboy. I had a reservation for a Model Y before the Model Ys were even released. I was one of the first Model Y owners in my city, and the car has been an absolute blast to drive. I love it to death. The automotive side of Tesla has none of the problems that I'm going to talk to you about today around customer service and customer success. And I'll give you some examples on why I believe Tesla Automotive doesn't have these problems, but Tesla Solar does. As usual, my feedback will be from a startup CEO's point of view, not necessarily as a consumer. This makes the video is somewhat cathartic for me because of what I've been through so far and fun because it's what I do for a living. As you'll see by this video, Tesla definitely does not pay me. Neither does YouTube, nor do I own a solar company. Really, the only benefit I get is by watching the like count and subscription count increase to my channel. So please like and subscribe. It appears the hardware and the product is really high quality. The product also looks nice and probably performs really well as well. But in my experience, that's where the good ends. Today is December 2nd, 2021. My solar roof project began October 25th. As you've seen in my prior videos, there's been a number of communication issues between Tesla corporate and the local Tampa office. This video is about absolutely none of those communication issues. I'm now on day 11 of Tesla not coming to my property to complete the job. Let's go outside and take a look. Tesla has marked my roof as complete. So I bet the local Tampa office is trying to get done as many jobs as possible before the end of the year, because that's likely how they're incentivized. And my job was running over and starting to push out jobs that they were expecting to complete by year's end. Instead of completing my job, they marked it as complete and went on to the next jobs. I have tried several times to get my advisor to change the status of my roof as not complete, which they refused to do. So now the local Tampa office gets to claim success for my completed roof. From a startup CEO's point of view, let's talk about the problems that I'm seeing inside of Tesla Solar. Before we can talk about what's wrong inside of Tesla Solar, we need to define a number of terms. I'm not gonna do lengthy definitions. I want definitions that you can remember. First, let's define customer service. Customer service is a reactive role. And just because you're reacting doesn't mean it's about something negative. For example, a restaurant server bringing you your meal is reacting to your order. Let me give you an example of what is not anything to do with customer service. Let's check out this Reddit post. Wow, simply wow, very cordial. North Post posted on the Tesla Solar Reddit that he had great customer service because the person on the phone was nice to them. The act of being nice alone does not equal customer service. An example about how Tesla Automotive provides good customer service is I can set up a appointment in the app 
I go to Tesla, they give me a car and I drive away and there's almost no impact to the fact that they are servicing my car. Now let's talk about what customer success means. Customer service is about reaction. Customer success is about proaction. We are proactively addressing things before you even ask. I actually have a good example of proaction using Tesla. When we first picked up our Model Y, within a week, it stopped working and there were errors all over the screen. I went into the Tesla app. I picked a date that was the nearest date available, which I think was five days away, um, and picked a time. Hours later, I received a call from Tesla saying, the issue seems serious. Could I bring the car in right away? That's customer success, and that is being proactive. So using that Tesla automotive example, please leave a comment on this video if Tesla Solar has ever proactively reached out to you to say that your solar system is not functioning. It's not like they don't have access to the data. And the baseline thing you would want your customer success team doing is to make sure your product is working before your customer finds out that it's not working. So now that we know what customer service and customer success is, it's a lot more simple to understand what the real problem is. To be able to react to your needs requires processes. Without processes, how do you staff up a large customer service organization where folks don't know what to do? So when you call in with an issue, most times an advisor may not know what to do, but what they can do is look up the process to see what's available to them to do. Processes allow you to hire thousands of customer service folks think project advisors, that all don't know what they're doing. In some cases, they eventually learn and they don't have to look at the process every single time. But when they don't know what to do, they refer back to the processes that are put in place to make you happy. But what happens if there are no processes? These folks don't know what to do. For example, ask your project advisor to speak to a manager. There is no manager to get on the phone with because there is no defined escalation process that is customer facing. Ask to speak to the operations manager of your local Tesla solar office. You can't because there is no process to do so. And on the customer success side, how would you even know to proactively reach out to accounts with issues unless there are processes that tell the success person to do so. The management are the only folks responsible for creating these processes and the controls around the processes to make sure they're being followed. Hello? Greetings, this is the ghost of Aaron Future. Tis the season. The video you just saw I made last week. And the phone call I received was actually from Tesla telling me that they'd be out in just a couple days to complete the job. So I decided not to make this video. However, Tesla came out for a couple days and then disappeared again. Another no call, no show. My solar job is not complete, yet over the past 17 days, Tesla has only been here for two of them. The roof still has missing tiles. It's not generating electricity. Cables are still hanging from the second floor that need to be connected to the inverters, and there's missing flashing. Not to mention, all their junk is still in my yard. With no reason why Tesla is not here and no communication from my advisor on when my roof will be done and when Tesla will return, on top of the fact that my job is marked as complete, the only assumption I can make is that Tesla Solar has abandoned my solar roof installation. To show you how important customer success and processes are, let me show you one that would have kept this from occurring 
on my account. What I've done here is I've created two customer success processes that would keep this from occurring from anyone else's account. The first one is a script that should run 24 hours. And what I mean from a script is like, imagine a small snippet of code. And this small snippet of code should pull from the customer relationship management system all clients that are currently pending inspection. Using a pivot point from the CRM, we should be able to look up the account on Tesla Solar's cloud and check to see if that client's gateway has sent any data that shows more than one kilowatt hour of energy has been produced by that client. If yes, the customer is in the right state. It's producing power, it's been installed, leave it in pending inspection. If no solar power has been produced, uh-oh, maybe someone's trying to game the system. So we're gonna change the client back to not installed, and we're gonna open a ticket for customer service within Tesla Solar to contact the client and inform them that the status of their installation is still not complete and why. And the second process does its best to try to eliminate abuse of the first process. If this video were escalated inside a Tesla, what would probably happen is the ivory tower management on the Tesla solar side would go ahead and say that these processes already exist. And you know what? They may already exist. But my experience with Tesla Solar shows me that they don't. And perception is reality. Tesla Solar needs to care about these problems. Brands are an intangible thing. You can't touch a company's brand. A brand is how a customer perceives your company. You can't make a product that is so good that it outshines the extreme lack of customer service and success at Tesla Solar. Eventually, this will impact the brand. We're gonna solve this together. As a community, we're gonna keep bubbling up these customer service and success issues until someone at Tesla takes notice. The way we're gonna fix this as a community starts with you. If you've ever had a Tesla Solar customer service horror story, I want you to leave it down in the comments below. And listen closely, this is a requirement. I need you to email me at the email address that you see on the screen because I'll have no way to contact you. So please email me and once you've done that, I'll schedule some time for you to come on this channel and talk about your Tesla Solar customer service issue. And then together we'll work on identifying where the process breakdown was inside of Tesla Solar that caused a problem. Eventually someone at Tesla Solar will take notice and we'll be able to stop making the videos and hopefully change the format into Tesla Solar success stories. And with that, the ghost of Aaron Future is out. Toodles.